Let's kick this thing off. Welcome back, Acolytes, to another episode of Grind Blood. We're in uh, season six. We didn't have one after episode one, after the murder mystery, but uh, for our first official uh, kickoff episode of the new format of the show, episode two, we wanted to... Uh, to uh, do a little after show here. Uh, I'll let I'll let Cossack kick us off. Yes, it was absolutely amazing. This was a chance for us to get to really know who our champions are before they get murdered next week in the death match. It was a nice little text. And I want to call it what Cinderblock Sally actually called after the stream was no day seeing their fears, how everyone had similar fears. Cinder, I want to toss it over to you because you had this first and calling it out, right? Like how interesting is it that the three of you had such distinct characters and yet had a commonality in what the greatest fear would be. Well, first of all, there were several times throughout this camp, this little arc where I was like, oh, there are all of our characters are very transformative in different ways, too. I noticed too. Oh, yeah. Um, like copycat quite literally becomes different people. Atlas is a transformer, and the hunger is kind of just a blob, like it's just mm -hmm. mush. Um, but I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. I I feel like there is a, I feel like in how cartoonish and different all these characters are, it is kind of funny that they're all have they're all all the, the fear thing is just a different element of of nothingness. You know, I thought that was very mm -hmm. cool. You have sort of like the sociopathy of copycat and like the philosophical existential dread of Atlas, and then the just like I want friends of uh, of uh, of Robbie. But yeah, it was cool. It was perfect. It was perfect. And we did get to see a lot of transformations. Uh, now, Doug, you brought Atlas back now again in another transformation. What did you think of his mood or his, well, space form, essentially, that you've given him in this alternate and now destroyed body? He's going to have to go through some more evolutions, oh. I imagine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, for those of you who, you know, have has followed the weird tale of Atlas, Atlas was a, was <clears throat> was actually one of the alphas alpha characters that I played in the D20 deathmatch testings that we did originally. And for me, the idea of Atlas is unbreakable was based on the original D&D build that he had. And I imagined him as this very, very static, purest form that could never be broken. And, you know, if you've watched that match, which is probably somewhere that I'm sure, you know, Mudcat and Beck would be able to tell you about, um, that was what he was like. But when the new rules and the new system came up, I realized unbreakable could mean something very different. He is absolutely breakable, but his spirit is what's unbreakable. The fact that he is mm. rebuilt over and over again. So he added, so he became this transformative character. And I love that every time I've come to Deathmatch with Atlas, something in him has changed. Like um, mm. like with the Double Sun Kohler stuff being added in after his match, um, you know, um, with... Um, Killy, yes, man, was, which was uh, yeah. interesting because that is actually a non-canon match now. It was in the Arbiter's right. uh, vision so uh you'll have to tell oh, us where the new origin of the double sun koa comes from but that could also be it is it, that could also be a mystery in and unto itself mm -hmm. you know where where did it come from so. the um and then in this one in particular as well like the uh the transformation um for atlas was very robotic so it was very much like as as sin was saying you know like um they're very very you know you know like shape-shifting and stuff like that which he, i think uh, he picked up very much from both copycat and Robbie, because they were very fluid, and and I know mm -hmm. that me as a, as a role player, I love to like synergize with my the people I share a table with. So with their movements being very, one of them is being very free form, like almost chaotic and fluid, mm -hmm. and um, copycats being very precise, very um, very much like I am copying or emulating something. I thought Atlas having a very mechanical version would make would like all three just synergize so well as shapeshifters. Same, like we are a great team, honestly, and it was just so cool to be able to be like, and hit that we stride are. so well. And it's very smooth. And there were a lot of different takes behind this. And I'm glad that we're seeing some of these differences and commonalities. Kat, now with yours, right, right from the beginning, you kind of made it clear of like, that's not what we're going with. We had Robbie Clark offer these whole slew of potential team names and immediately you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta know for, for copycat, right? Where has she kind of gone starting with this big disagreement to where she sees her teammates? Cause at the end, you had her stand in front kind of protecting the two of them. Very big difference from the start of the episode. 
So copycat is she's just used to taking people's identity and then calling it quits. She doesn't get herself detached. She always worked alone. So the fact that she had to team up with people, I mean, that's unheard of, you know, they're mm -hmm. only going to drag her down or they're just going to, you know, something's going to go wrong and it's going to be because of them, obviously, in her mind. But slowly but surely, she's seeing, you know, like a use for each one. Uh, and yes, it is a use for each one. So she's like, well, you know, the this these two you know these two people are very uh beneficial mm -hmm. in getting things done and they're very useful so maybe it's okay if i can you know keep them around and maybe you know if i can prevent them harm you know mm -hmm. then maybe that wouldn't be such a bad thing so yes yeah like yeah. okay this this could be good yeah she's like okay this could be good you know this okay. could be beneficial Huh. Yeah, this will be a, yeah. This will be an interesting season because uh, as you're watching at home, you realize we've changed things up a little bit. Uh, we're we're doing these uh, kind of one shot introductions to these characters, working them as a team, getting to know them a little bit more than we traditionally would know our champions. Yeah, and I then set the bar high. Yeah, and then we're gonna be seeing you guys next week to fight in a death match. So there's lots of lore. Hopefully, that's gonna develop. And I uh, just want one more. Uh, one special shout out to the Timothy lore tonight. Uh, call back <laughs> to our very first season where Timothy the worm was exploded on an asteroid in space. Uh, and now we know Krillin he has embarrassing style. secrets. <laughs> so getting to getting to come back to that and tie that up, I think is really nice fan service. So uh, just that was super fun, but uh, it was a, it was an interesting uh, one shot for sure. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys kind of fight to the death next week. So uh, we'll come back and see how that goes, but uh, we're going to wrap this one up and we'll, we'll talk after the next one. So uh, uh, we'll see you guys on the next D20 death match.